My distinguished ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and fellow musicians, throughout our lives we consistently face two types of change, change by choice and change resulting from circumstances beyond or out of our control. As we humans face both, we must adapt and build a new pathway through the unknown. And when we do, we see that throughout all time, humanity tends to address, to confront the unknown changes with actions based upon experiences of the past. For those of us sensitive to music, we understand the culture of music is a concentrated reflection of history, in other words, of the past. However, through music, this past is constantly reborn. In this way, as change occurs, music permits us to confront and organize our past in such a way that we can build a more constructive future. In short, music as both a mirror and as metaphor of humanism serves as an anchor for civilization. And what could be more pertinent towards adapting to an unknown future than the teaching of music to young and old alike? Today, we come together here in Hamburg to collectively exchange experiences, observations of life, and to explore the clues they provide us towards understanding what change implies. Life is inconceivable without change, just as music is inconceivable without the new. We as music educators know that every new music work that we study and or perform is a departure into the unknown. While change brings the opportunity for hopes, wishes, new perspectives, we must also say that it brings the potential for discomfort and fear. Most would agree that the highly visible turbulence and instability of our world today are signs of a deep process of development whose end result we can never know or imagine. Moreover, one might observe a collective sense that the world in which we grew up is either out of step or has already been lost. After all, news and media outlets that constantly announce crises in the form of military conflict, climate change, inflation, energy costs, social displacement, the list goes on and on. But from the historical perspective, we note that it has been these crises which have provoked the most profound changes in our civilization. We assume that especially those crises which place people in front of the abyss of confronting life and death, of danger, of paralysis, of facing the void. These are those which open the eyes, the senses, and the mind to another world, into that not yet lived or seen. Yet, it is also through those crises in which lie an opportunity to rethink, to experience a renaissance, to remember new values and to realign. It would be important to accept that change in itself, however, is not an end result. And it, it is that we ourselves who will ultimately determine what enduring substance will be written on the sheets of history. Speaking as a musician, it can be said that for centuries, we have witnessed humanity build a great culture a music repertoire of masterpieces whose relevance is universal. As such, it is also irreplaceable and in many ways serves us as a source of identity. We observe that large cultures have grown and perished, Greece, the Roman Empire, just to name the obvious. Many of these large cultures have left traces in the forms of fragments of their eras through their artwork and these artistic fragments have shown that their greatness as a society can be characterized by their cultural creations and innovations, those impulses that have allowed lifestyle qualities to be progressively redesigned and with it offering a new meaning and offering a future. However, in evolution, the new always reflects its origins. Music in particular has shown that within the new also lies the old. Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms, Mahler, Schoenberg. That which is allowed to completely disappear from history is a testament to its irrelevancy.
beyond a short-lived trend. This is what guides us as pedagogues, as musicians, composers, leaders, and how we today anchor our focus onto the future, while at the same time listening to the past. Consider the El Philharmonie, a symbol of both our civic and individual cultural identity. A concert hall must be especially celebrated as a place of music making, but also just as importantly, as a place for community gathering. A small example might be the Philharmonic State Orchestra's recent performance of the original version of the Deutsche Requiem with a chorus drawn from the entire community of Hamburg. It is through community gathering that we support our confidence. We as cultural institutions, as professionals, we have a responsibility to signal that something of ourselves can be found always through the visual and performance arts. Thank you so much for your participation in this Kerbe Stiftung Initiative, and I wish you a productive and inspiring symposium.